Good afternoon. Welcome to the July 14th meeting of the Metropolitan Area Planning Commission. I hereby call this 14th, oh, 13th. 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 July 13th. Look at your calendar, Anne. Welcome to the July 13th meeting of the Metropolitan Area Planning Commission. I will call the meeting to order and ask for our opening uh, introductory recording, please. Before we begin the agenda, the Wichita Sedgwick County Metropolitan Area Planning Commission and the Wichita Sedgwick County Board of Zoning Appeals would like to take this opportunity to welcome everyone to this public hearing. For those in attendance, copies of the agenda for today's meeting, the public hearing procedure and planning department staff reports on all agenda items are available in the lobby. The Planning Commission's and the BZA's bylaws limit the applicant on a zoning, subdivision, or variance application and his or her representatives to a total of 10 minutes of speaking time at the start of the hearing on that item, plus up to two minutes at the conclusion of that hearing. All other persons wishing to speak on agenda items are limited to three minutes per person. However, if they feel that it is needed and justified, the chairman may extend these times by up to two minutes. All speakers are requested to state his or her name and address for the record when beginning to speak. When you are finished speaking, please share your name, address, and the case number on the sheet provided in the room. This will enable staff to notify you if there are any additional proceedings concerning that item. All speakers at the podium, please remove your face mask before speaking into the microphone. Please note that all written and visual materials you present to the Commission and the Board will be retained by the Secretary as part of the official record. If you are not speaking, but you wish to be notified about future proceedings on a particular case, please provide your contact information to the Planning Department. The Planning Commission and the Board are interested in hearing the views of all persons who wish to express themselves on all the agenda items. However, we ask that all speakers please be as courteous and concise as possible and avoid long repetitions of facts or opinions which have already been stated. For your information, the Wichita City Council has adopted a policy for all city zoning items. A copy of this policy is available from the planning staff. The City Council relies on a written record of the Planning Commission hearings and does not conduct its own additional public hearings on these items. The decision of the BZA is final. Any appeal of a decision of the BZA is to the District Court. Now I would ask for a roll call of Commissioners present, please. Certainly. Fox? Here. Duell? Here. McKay? Here. Green is absent. Bill Johnson? Here. Blick? Josh Blick? Is absent. Nix? Here. Foster? Here. Warren? Here. Joe Johnson? Joe Johnson is absent. Miles. Here. Hartman is absent. Aldrich. Here. Williams Bay. Here. I show 10 members are present. Um, you've received minutes of the June 8th meeting. We have identified some corrections on page 18 and page 21 that will need research to verify the correction is accurate. So I will request that we defer these minutes. Are there any other pages with corrections that need to be noted at this time? Uh, Madam Chair, also it looks like the uh, name of uh, Mr. Apartment is, is misspelled. Is misspelled. Yeah. Got it. Thank you. Any other corrections then? Do I need a motion to defer? I would accept a motion to defer approval of the June 8th minutes. So moved. Second. second. Motion from Commissioner Warren, second from Commissioner Foster. All in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 
motion passes 10 0. Thank you. And the um, meeting of May 11th. Ah, this is going to be fun. Madam Chair. Yes. The June 22nd meeting minutes, we will also defer till the next meeting. Now, next, we will go through a review of all the agenda items to identify those that we can take on consent, um, beginning with the subdivision items. Uh, item 2.1, subdivision 2023-00013, Falcon Falls, north of East 45th Street and east of Hydraulic. Does anyone on the commission want to hear this case? Seeing none, does anyone present in chambers want to hear this case? Seeing none, is anyone participating virtually want to hear this case? We'll take 2.1 on consent. Item 2.2, subdivision 2023 0016, a final plat of Grass Valley Estates at 20, 295th Street West and 39th Street South in the county. Is there anyone on the commission who would like to hear this case? Is there anyone present in chambers who would like to hear this case? Anyone participating virtually like to hear this case? Hearing none, we'll take item 2.2 on consent. Item 2.3, subdivision 2023-00024, final plot of Jackson Heights at near East Douglas and North 127th Street East. Does anyone on the commission want to hear this case? Anyone in chambers want to hear this case? Seeing none, anyone participating virtually want to hear this case 2.3. We'll take that item on consent. Item 2.4, subdivision 2023-00030, final plat of the Raymond edition at 29th Street North and 135th Street West in the county. Does anyone on the commission want to hear this case? Anyone participating in chambers want to hear this case? Seeing none, anyone participating virtually want to hear this case? We will take item 2.4 on consent and I would entertain a motion. Uh, Madam Chair, make a motion to approve items 2.1, 2.2, 2.3, and 2.4. Second. I have a motion from Commissioner Aldrich and a second from Commissioner Miles. Any discussion? Uh, all in favor, please indicate by saying aye. Ah. Right. Any opposed, same sign. Motion passes 10-0. Moving on to the vacation items. Vacation item uh, 3.1, vacation item 2023-00023, located at 9400 East 35th Street North. Is there anyone on the commission who would like to hear this case? Seeing none, any, anyone participating in chambers who would like to hear this case? Anyone participating virtually who would like to hear this case, 9400 East, 34th Street North? We will take that one on consent. Item 3.2, vacation item 2023-00024, located near 37th Street North and North Ridge Road. Does anyone on the commission want to hear this case? Seeing none, anyone in chambers want to hear this case? Seeing none, anyone participating virtually want to hear this case? We'll take item 3.2 on consent and I would entertain a motion. Move to approve 3.1 and 3.2 per staff reports. Second. Okay. Motion from Commissioner Foster, second from Commissioner McKay. All in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Any opposed, nay. Motion passes 10-0. Moving on to the public hearing items. Item 4.1, conditional use 2023-00026, located at 405 North Erie. Does anyone on the commission want to hear this case? Anyone in chambers want to hear this case? Anyone participating virtually want to hear this case? We will take item 4.1 on consent. 
Item 4.2, conditional use 2023 00027, located at 18801 West 69th Street North. Anyone on commission want to hear this case? Seeing none, anyone in chambers want to hear this case? Seeing none, anyone participating virtually want to hear this item, item 4.2 on the agenda? Hearing none, we'll take that on consent. Item 4.3, conditional use 2023 00028, located at 6301 East Briar Rose Lane. Anyone on the commission want to hear this case? Seeing none, anyone attending in chambers want to see this, hear this case? Okay, we have one person over here, is that right? Okay, we will hear item 4.3. Item 4.4, conditional use, and do we have uh, the applicant or agent for item 4.3 present? Oh, you are, you're the applicant agent? Do you want to talk about it? Okay. We will hear it. Item 4.4, conditional use 2023 00029. Uh, this is located at 15958 West, 119th Street South. Does anyone on the commission want to hear this case? Did I hear something? No. Okay. Is anyone in chambers want to hear this case? Oh, you don't want to hear it? Okay. So you understand that if none of the commissioners want to hear it, we feel confident that we would accept the content. Okay. So we will take item 4.3 on consent. Yes. Oh. You would like to hear it? Okay. Okay. We do want to hear it after all. This is very popular. I can't wait to hear what we have to talk about. Yes, 4.3. We will hear this case as requested by Mr. Bohm uh, from Garver. Item 4.4, conditional use 2023 0029 at 15958 West 119th Street South. Uh, does anyone on the commission want to hear that case? Seeing none, I think I just repeated that, but we'll be safe on everything today. Um, uh, does anyone present in chambers want to hear this case? Seeing none, does anyone participating virtually want to hear this case? Item 4.4 on the agenda. Hearing none, we'll take 4.4 on consent. Item 4.5. Community Unit Plan 2023 0020, uh, located at 3550 North Woodlawn. Does anyone on the commission want to hear this case? Seeing none, does anyone participating in chambers want to hear this case? Seeing none, does anyone participating virtually want to hear this case? 4.5 on the agenda. Hearing none, take that item on consent. Item 4.6, zoning case 2023 0036, located on the southeast corner of Pawnee and 127th Street East. Does anyone on the commission want to hear this case? Does anyone participating in chambers want to hear this case? We'll, we will present the information about the case from a staff report. We'll have opportunity for public comment on the case if we hear it. So if you would like to make public comment on a case, then you want to hear it. And so when that case comes up, is there a particular case you came for? 127th and Pawnee. 127th and Pawnee is, do you, okay. So we will hear this case. East Pawnee and 127th Street South, East. 4.6 on the agenda. That's the one you want to hear? Okay. All right. We will hear 4.6. And is the applicant or agent present? Right here. All right. Thank you. Item 4.7, zoning case 2023 0037. This is located at 905 West Douglas, 115, 119, and 121 South Handley. Does anyone on the commission want to hear this case? Seeing none, anyone in chambers want to hear this case? 
Seeing none, anyone participating virtually want to hear this case? Item 4.7 on the agenda. We will take that item by consent. Item 4.8, zoning case 2023-00038. This is generally located on the east side of South Webb Road and south of East Pawnee. Does anyone on the commission want to hear this case? Anyone in chambers want to hear this case? Item 4.8. Is anyone participating virtually want to hear this case? Hearing none, we'll take 4.8 on consent. Item 4.9, zoning case 2023-00039. This is located at 1150 North Broadway. Does anyone on the commission want to hear this case? Seeing none, anyone present in chambers want to hear this case? And is there anyone participating virtually who would like to hear this case? Hearing none, we'll take item 4.9 on consent. Mr. Chairman? Yes. I move to approve items 4.1, 4.2, 4.4, 4.5, 4.6, 8, and 9. Second. Uh, the motion from Commissioner Johnson, and I think I heard Commissioner Warren's first on the second. Uh, Commissioner John Bill Johnson and Commissioner Warren. Uh, all in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Any opposed, same sign. Motion passes. And now we'll begin to hear the cases beginning with 4.3. Um, and our presenting planner is Christina for the staff report, please. Good afternoon, everyone. Christina Reith, Associate Planner with the Metropolitan Area Planning Department. This is case number CON 2023 0028. The applicant is requesting a conditional use to allow an accessory apartment on a property zoned RR Rural Residential District. It is 5.26 acres in size and located at 6301 East Briar Rose Lane. The property is currently developed with a single family dwelling and the accessory apartment will be a new building on site. Paul, could you skip to the site plan, please, so I can talk about it? So according to the site plan here, the applicant plans to construct an additional driveway off the existing driveway for the proposed accessory apartment. Because the subject site is larger than five acres, the accessory structure is permitted in front of the principal structure. The accessory apartment will measure 30 feet on the north end, where my mouse is, 35 feet on the south end, and 60 feet on the east and west ends. Uh, the Wichita Sedgwick County Unified Zoning Code defines an accessory apartment as a dwelling unit that may, may be wholly within or may be detached from a principal single family dwelling unit. Accessory apartments are subject to the supplementary use regulations which are listed in this report. One, a maximum of one accessory apartment may be allowed on the same lot as a single dwell dwelling unit that may be within the building within an accessory building or constructed as an accessory apartment. Two, the appearance of an accessory apartment shall be compatible with the main dwelling unit and with the character of the neighborhood. Three, the accessory apartment shall remain accessory to and under the same ownership as a principal, sing principal single-family dwelling unit, and the ownership shall not be divided or sold as a condominium. And four, water and sewer service water and sewer service provided to the accessory apartment shall not be provided as a separate service from the main dwelling. Electric, gas, telephone, and cable uh, television utility services may be separate. The character of the neighborhood is rural and low density residential. All adjacent properties are zoned RR Rural Residential District. Properties to the north and west are developed with single family dwellings. Properties to the east and south are in use as agricultural land. This property is unplatted. Uh, section 3 of the subdivision regulations state that any expansion of residential uses is, is exempt from the platting process. And there are no zoning cases associated with this property. The request for an accessory apartment is in conformance with the community investments plan. When we take a look at the Wichita uh, 2035 urban growth areas map, it identifies a site as being within the rural growth area. Based upon the information available prior to the public hearings, 
planning staff recommends that the conditional use request be approved subject to the conditions which are listed in your report. The recommendation is based on the golden rules that we all abide by uh, for every staff report. I will skip to the last one here, opposition or support of neighborhood residents. And so at the time the staff report was prepared and to this day, uh, staff did not receive any public comment on the requested conditional use. And we'll go ahead to the site photos here. This is looking east away from the site. This is looking east towards the site. This is looking north away from the site. So if we look just west of this photo, this is where the proposed accessory apartment will be. This is looking north towards the site. This is looking south away from the site. This is looking south towards the site. This is the main structure. This is looking west away from the site. This is looking west towards the site. And those are my site photos. And with that, I will stand for questions. Any questions? Any questions? Any questions for staff? I just have one. Is this just going to be one residential apartment, or is this going to be more than one? To my knowledge, it will be one apartment. That's only one is allowed on site. Okay. Thank you. Any, uh, Commissioner Warren. Christine, either you misspoke or I misheard. Uh, and I, I don't think it's not really a big deal, but when you showed the drawing on there, you showed 30 foot on the north end, and you said 30 foot on the south end. But I'm showing 30, looks like the 30 35 feet. 35 feet on 35 the south feet. end. Yeah, okay, just for the record, I want to make sure that was correct. Thank okay, you. Okay, thank you. Any other questions from commissioners at this time? Seeing none, we would then call forward the applicant or agent, please. You have 10 minutes to tell us about the project. And if you'd go to the microphone, please, so that the people who are participating virtually can hear you, that's really helpful to us. Okay. You can also use the mouse as a pointer if you want to uh, refer to anything on the site plan. Okay, if you want to pull up And the... we need your name, address, oh, and telephone, <laughs> and I'm sorry, your name, address, I have a lot of things for you, don't I? Uh, your name and address, please, for the record. Okay, name is Bradley Hanneman, and my wife, Julie Hanneman, is here as well. Um, address is 6301 East Briar Rose Lane in Valley Center, 67147, and the case number, if you need that, CON 2023-00028. Thank you. You're doing great. Um, so, yeah, this one's probably um, the easiest one to look at. Um, actually, what's the next? Is there one that's slightly larger than this? Let's show in the whole property. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so no. using the mouse here, you can kind of see on my screen it looks good. There we go. So um, main structure is here. Um, technically, they said the front of the property by width is going to be the smaller of the two. So this is the front of the property. And that existing driveway comes in here. Um, so this would be a little jet off um, just to the west of the driveway. Um, essentially what this is going to be is not a commercial apartment. Um, I mean, not in the sense of apartment that most people think this is more, if I were to describe it most accurately, it'd be an in-law suite. Um, so to have Two-car garage, similar to any detached garage or shop, but it will have living quarters in there. Um, uh, Julie's parents are at retirement age, already retired, and so they are. The reason we purchased this property was because it had enough land to do this. We understood that we could could do this. Um, obviously, trying to minimize the extent of the whole project, using the existing driveway for the most part. And just doing a small driveway there minimizes the costs on um, just the gravel that comes in there to make that happen. Um, so essentially, if we go back to the site plan, plan that's slightly larger or enlarged, so it's zoomed in just a little bit. Yeah, this one. Um, about half of this is going to be just two-car garage. And so... From the street, it would look more 
just like a shop or a garage, and that was the whole idea, um, not to make it look like anything out of the ordinary in the neighborhood, um, to where the cars would come down our driveway, same as any other car, or go in the driveway to a different structure um, to kind of minimize that. Um, if you were to look at the whole property, um, it's outlined in, with trees around the entire property, probably, well, I wouldn't compare it to any other property, but we have a lot of trees, so it's very secluded. Um, even on this side, um, there's a good tree line there, and down the driveway, there's a good tree line here as well. So just kind of looking at it, where it would go, it would kind of be off sheltered by itself, um, somewhat hidden from other properties, just so that it wouldn't be an eyesore to anyone, um, making it look like the existing structure would also help with that. Um, and so that's kind of kind of the background of it. Um, there's two neighbors here that are going to speak. Um, three days ago, we got word that there were restrictive covenants in the neighborhood. Weren't told about that at closing or even aware of that at closing, so that was kind of unsettling. Um, but anyways, they're going to kind of speak to those. We were able to read through those two days ago, and um, a lot of it seems pretty archaic in there. Um, it says every property has to have wood windows, um, every which none of them do. Um, it says every property has to have wood shake shingles or concrete tile roofs, and we know of at least one other one that has composite roof. It says every propane tank has to be screened or fenced. We've seen multiple that aren't screened or fenced. And so it's kind of one of those things where if we need to go down that road of addressing that and defer this, then we're happy to do that. Um, I don't know the whole process of what all that entails, um, but that was the only part okay. where we were just kind of little gut punch this week, <laughs> just saying okay. that Surprise. would have been nice to know before okay. we bought the property. So uh, right. just trying to be open with everyone and okay. make sure everyone's aware. Any questions from commissioners for the applicant at this point, Commissioner Aldrich? Yes, sir. Just for clarifying on your site plan, the other existing residence that's there, is that you, yours, Dow? Yes. Okay. Yep. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions for the applicant at this time? Okay. Thank you. You can take a seat, but stay close. We'll now call for any public comment on. So the neighbors, of, this is your time if you would like to come speak. Just come to the podium, give your name and address, please, and you have three minutes to share what you'd like to share. Mm -hmm. uh, my name is Scott Salisbury. I am at 8145 North Woodlawn, Valley Center, Kansas. Um, I just wanted to make sure that the commission was aware that there are restrictive covenants in the neighborhood, and uh, we feel that that okay. would need It'll to be, be addressed. When he's done, I'll ask. Uh, the covenants do not allow for any other, anything other than a single dwelling. It specifically uh, forbids a garage with living quarters attached. Uh, but again, we're open as a group to review those covenants. Um, as a group, we can change those with a two-thirds vote. Okay. Any questions for this speaker? And Commissioner Green Warren? This is where we, 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 we don't have anything to do with restrictive covenants. We can't take those into consideration one way or the other. We make no decisions on that. That's a that's a private matter, a private contract between people who live in the area. My question would be, as I read the covenants, it appears that they state in there that the covenants would maybe supersede your decision. Whichever is more restrictive would stay in place. We have legal comment. Kirk Sponsel, Assistant County Counselor. The best way I can describe these situations involving restrictive covenants, those are uh, private civil matters. So as previously in indicated, uh, those shouldn't be going into our considerations. And then additionally, um, our considerations and the approval or denial of this application would, would theoretically not influence any civil standing you might have in regards to those restrictive covenants. Those, they're essentially separate. So in other words, we'll make a decision today based on the merits of the case, not considering the, the civil aspect, and then you would have to address that outside these chambers. Okay. 
Very good. Can that answer your question? Yes. Okay, very good. Uh, anyone else who'd like to speak on this item, please come to the podium, state your name and address, and you'll have three minutes. Good afternoon, commissioners. My name is Chris Spohm. I live at, live at 6201 Briar Rose Lane, so immediately to the west of this property. My wife and I were open to this whole idea. I just wanted to make sure, and we just uh, were able to provide a copy of the covenants to them a couple of day, three days ago, and just to let them know um, we're open to this. It, but it's uh, it's not Mr. Salisbury's decision or mine. But I think I think that our covenant group is open to having discussions with them, and I just wanted to make that point today. Okay, great. So um, we're not against this, but we just want them to know that there's a secondary private procedure involved. Okay. And that's it. And I'd stand for any questions. Okay. Uh, Commissioner Nix. Are, are all of the uh, properties about five acres looks like on the map? Yes. Uh, one or two are larger, but most of them are five acres or approximately five acres. And I'm sort of familiar with this. What, what creek runs through there? Pardon? What creek runs through? What's the name of the creek? Do you know? But there no, is, there is creek, <laughs> I, don't, there is I don't know the name of the creek. Down through there, right? There's a creek a little bit further to the north. In fact, it runs north of Mr. Salisbury's house. Okay. Are most of the uh, properties, I mean, it's an older neighborhood, I think. I mean, are most of them tree-lined? Um, part of them are tree-lined. Their property, the applicant's property, is, is fairly well tree-lined. So uh, some in the middle aren't, aren't as heavily treed. Those around the perimeter typically have more trees. And it's been there about... 30 years. I live up th that direction. It's been there, yeah, at least 30 years. Yeah. Okay. Great. Any and, questions for the speaker? I, Is that Joe? Just Joe, I have a question. Commissioner Johnson, um, go ahead. So I know we don't have to take into consideration the covenants, but how long did they run? They ran, they run 30 years. They expire here soon but they automatically renew every 10 years forward unless we take action as the homeowners to uh, either modify them and establish a new time or to terminate them interesting okay thank you, thank you. okay any other questions is there anyone thank else you. who would like to speak on this topic thanks chris and commissioner yes I, is leading I would real quick Okay, uh, please state your name and address, and you have three minutes. This is Joey Ritchie, Stephen Joseph Ritchie, uh, 6200 Briar Rose Lane. I live directly across the street. And just since we're all here, I mean, I know there's some neighbors on this discussion. Um, we need to redo our covenants is what it all sounds like. We need to all get together and redo it. I'm fine with what they are doing. Um, but it just seems like everything needs to be updated. I'd like to keep the covenants. Um, so let's all get together, appro hopefully approve this, this uh, extra garage and update our covenants. Great. And that's all I have to say. I love it when people work together. It's so encouraging. Thank you. This is a great, great sign for America today. Uh, anyone else who'd like to speak on this topic? Right, we'll bring it back to the commission. What's your pleasure, Commissioner McKay? I'll make a motion that we approve subject to staff comments, but also make it to the homeowners in the area. Uh, you got wood shakes is one of the restrictions. I doubt today if you could get insurance if you had to put them back on. So, it's wood shake or... yeah, but but still, wood shakes insurance won't even oh. touch it. And actually, you have a person in your neighborhood named Chris Bohm who will know a lot about those kind of things, so make sure he comes to the meeting. <laughs> I, I would second. Okay. I have a motion from Commissioner McKay to approve his staff comments. I have a second from Commissioner Johnson. Any further discussion? Commissioner Warren? I'll be voting in favor. This is, We've done dozens and dozens of these uh, in the last two years, and this is uh, an ideal situation to do it. It's, it's common and fits, fits the area. Um, Thank you. All in favor of this motion, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, motion passes 9-0. Thank you. Commissioner, or uh, Director Waddle. I think uh, on the vote, 10-0, because uh, we've got Joe Johnson, who's Joe joined. added. Okay. 
we added Commissioner Johnson and we lost Commissioner Miles, so we're still at 10-0. Thank you for bringing that to my attention. Next item, Christina or Philip. Item 4.7. Item 4.6, Philip, will you please present the staff report? Good afternoon, Philip Ziebenbergen with planning staff. Um, zone 2336 is a request for two zoning classifications located on the southeast corner of East Pawnee and South 127th Street East. As you can see on the map in front of you, the applicant is requesting to enlarge the existing limited commercial area uh, by a couple acres and then rezone the remainder of the subject property from SF5 to TF3. The hard corner of 127th and Pawnee was rezoned back in the 50s when this property was out in the county, and the county um, holistically rezoned all four corners of arterial intersections within the three mile ring of Wichita. So that's a remnant of that. And so, as I said before, they're looking to enlarge the existing limited commercial. Um, to provide more acreage for commercial development. The TF3 would allow the opportunity of a mixture of single family and duplex development. Um, that ratio has not been determined at this time. This whole property was recently annexed into the city of Wichita within the last six months. The unified zoning code requires a community unit plan for commercial developments larger than six acres, the increase in size of the limited commercial zoning brings this commercial area to above six acres. The applicant did not submit a community unit plan with this. That is not a requirement of the action of this zoning today. It just means that in the future, before any building permits can be issued for commercial development within the limited commercial area, um, the property owner whoever they are at that time, will have to submit a community unit plan for consideration by the Planning Commission uh, before any commercial development can be done in at the corner. The still along the lines with the commercial development, the Wichita Landscape Ordinance requires a landscape buffer along the shared property line, so it would be along these two property lines because this property would be residential. This property is commercial, so we need a landscape buffer there. Any development within the commercial area would be required to have landscaping along Pawnee and 127th Street. That would be governed by the future community unit plan, likely going to follow the requirements of the Wichita Landscape Ordinance. The property surrounding this area, as you can see to the west, um, there is a commercial zoning at the southwest corner with a community unit plan. This is not developed at this time. It's currently an agricultural field. The SF5 property to the south of it, if we go to the aerial, is Southeast High School. Uh, properties to the northwest is a combination of limited commercial at the corner, uh, single family residential, and TF3, two family residential. And these houses here are duplexes. These houses here are single family. Property to the north, this property here is zone PUD. Uh, it provides custom and development standards for a uh, kind of a medium density townhome and duplex development that was recently approved in the last couple of years. This is property that's zoned single family. It's a golf course. This property over here is zoned MF18 is a um, development of um, duplexes in a multifamily type style. And you have more single family development over here uh, to the east of the golf course. Property to the south is zoned SF20. It's in Sedgwick County. And you can see it's a combination of larger lot single family residential um, and just more um, generally undeveloped land, but just more ranch land type use, um, not necessarily used for agriculture. The property is unplatted. Uh, the property will have to be platted prior to the issuance of any building permits or development. I believe the plat is under consideration by, um, has been through our process or will be coming shortly. I will defer to the agent on that to give any updates on the platting. East Pawnee is a two lane paved arterial with open dishes. South 127th Street is also a paved two-lane arterial with open dishes. Currently, the intersection is controlled by a, a four-way stop sign. As development continues in the area, the intersection will most likely be improved with a signal when traffic engineering deems it appropriate. In looking in the city's CIP, Capital Improvements Program, there is funding identified in the future 
for the improvements of the intersection in this area. It, um, funding is identified in 2028 as part of the um, reconstruction of Pawnee from 127th to the west towards Greenwich. Um, and that would bring, that would improve the capacity or increase the capacity of Pawnee for that mile section. And it does include improvements to the intersection at Pawnee and 127th Street. The comprehensive plan identifies this area as appropriate for new employment, new employment residential mix and agricultural and vacant. The first two categories support a mixture of commercial and residential development. The assignment of agricultural and vacant categories likely due to the presence of a floodway and floodplain to the west. You can see that this is kind of an interesting, very specific line of annexation as well as zoning that is indicative of floodplain and floodway that really wasn't even developable land anyway and it was not even needed to be annexed into the city of Wichita and they didn't want to develop it anyway to avoid doing that. So that's just where the carryover that comes in. Any type of work in a floodplain has to require proper permitting and go through the necessary steps. If any of the land they want to develop is in the floodplain, they have to work through that um, during the time of development anyway. Staff is recommending approval. Uh, up until the um, public hearing, staff has not heard any comments regarding this case. And I can go through the site photos here if Paul, you want to jump to those. This is looking south at the property. It's currently an agricultural field. Next picture. This is looking to the southwest from the property. You can see this undeveloped portion is that community unit plan, commercially zoned property and then Southeast High School. Next picture. This is looking north. This is towards the PUD. You can see the road infrastructure has been installed prior to any residential development. Next picture. And I can stand for any questions. Any questions for staff? Commissioner Warren. Philip, the uh, area that's being uh, rezoned for TF3 uh, will since that does, does that land drain towards the annex area to the pond and the floodway to the east? I will defer to the agent on that one. And then my question, if it does, do, do they have to develop a drainage plan to keep any additional water from going into that pond? The overall site drainage and at how it incorporates the overall drainage system for Sedgwick County has to be reviewed during the time of platting. A drainage plan is required for the area within the plat and how storm water will be handled and where is the proper place for detention or retention within the boundaries of the plat area and how it can be processed into the broader system outside of the development. That is all handled during the platting process. Thank you. Okay, and if there are no further questions, we'll ask for the agent, please, to come forward, to state your name and address, and you have 10 minutes. Good afternoon again, commissioners. My name is Chris Bohm from Garver, 1995 Midfield Road, Wichita, Kansas, 67209. Uh, Philip did a great job on recounting um, kind of the history of this zone change and what the developer is after. I'm going to give you a little bit more history, if I may. The intersection at, at, at Pawnee and 127th actually was slated for a roundabout about four years ago, and preliminary designs were put together. There, there was just um, political will against it at the time. I guess I'll say it that the best way. So they pushed that back and moved it into the CIP, probably, like was said, for a inter, uh, signalized intersection with the next stage of the Pawnee development, the CIP development. I just wanted to let you know that was an issue um, that was addressed earlier, but it, the decision was made not to move forward with it. So as this develops, obviously, that's going to drive that project uh, a little more quickly, I would imagine. Um, the watershed dam, that is a that is a watershed-owned dam, and the name of the watershed escapes me at this time. They own and manage it. Yes, we have been in contact with them. They have very uh, specific restrictions on how close we can be with the residential lots. 
And we have worked with them on the area to the north here where their, uh, their spillway and their facilities drain on into the um, area, which is called Clear Ridge Edition. And I think that's Clear Ridge Townhome Edition on to the east. And we've worked with stormwater through the plat. This is almost at final plat stage. It's called Buffalo Pines Edition. It's been through preliminary plat. The final plat may be scheduled at this time. I'm not certain. We've worked through the drainage. We've worked with city storm sewer, uh, stormwater department. We have controlled the peaks of the different storm series that, as required by the city of Wichita, and then um, added in the water quality requirements for stormwater quality per the platting requirements. So that's all almost complete. So um, ultimately, they'd like to build a mix of single family and TF3, but we don't have a way of identifying that now. The market will move that around. So that's the intent. However, we are asking for TF3 on the majority of the site and the expansion of the limited commercial to get it a little bit bigger than the old 600 by 600 foot um, standards that were put in place back in the 50s. And we understand and accept the idea that we need a CUP at the time that that would be developed. With that, I'd stand for any questions. Any questions? Commissioner Warren? So there's a political decision on the roundabout. What was the argument against roundabout? The I think the, I'll just characterize it, the newness of it. The newness of it. That and high school driving characteristics, high school student driving characteristics, as I recall. And the, the roundabout, the thing about a roundabout, it does reduce the severity of crashes. So actually it, re, it increases safety. It is a different thing to navigate, as any of you have been in one, understand. If you use them more regularly, they probably become much, much easier to use. But that was the way that decision moved forward. And maybe over time, maybe even when the Pawnee improvements are done, that would be reconsidered at that time. Okay, thank you. Any other questions for... Commissioner Aldrich. Uh, Go ahead, Commissioner Aldrich. Chris, do you uh, support the recommendations from staff? Yes, we're in agreement with staff comments. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Anything you. else? Then next we'll call for public comment. And stay close, Chris, if there are any questions that are asked that you'll have an opportunity to come and respond to. So please proceed to the podium and state your name and address, and you'll have three minutes for your comments. Hi, my name is uh, Charlie Cookson, and uh, I live at 2800 South 127th Street. Uh, over here, uh, basically, if I've got my directions right, my property abuts the entire development from 127th uh, from the west line coming to east. So I've got that flag property there, and I may be way, way ahead of any concerns to even be voicing. As uh, is, is I understood, uh, the first information I uh, got that this was going to be developed uh, was from Todd Farha. Now, what relationship do you have with Todd, may I ask? Well, if you would proceed with all the questions you well, have, and then we'll have someone I, return I guess, to answer. I guess my concern is, uh, number one, uh, is a plat, the Buffalo Pines plat, it's still being worked on? Yes. It's our not final? Purpose, our purpose today is to determine if this is an appropriate use of the land. Okay. And then the platting is actually a separate step altogether, but it sounds like it's coming very soon. So those questions would be uh, addressed at that time. Okay. So if I'm concerned about protecting my tree line and the water supply and things like that, I'm going to be coming back another day? Um, yes, th that would be. Okay. basically be correct how do i how do i get the final buffalo plans okay that's great okay. uh i think that's it okay great uh, thanks for coming today again another connection handshake look at this it's a sunny day in wichita kansas <laughs> no we'll this is Chris Tom again. Okay. we'll response we'll communicate and um address the concerns and uh, update a schedule of any of the plotting that's underway on this site. So just send me an email, please. Is there any time zone yet? Uh, time development? Are we going to need 
Uh, I'll just I'll get with you offline. Okay. Yeah. Great. Thank you so Thank much, you. gentlemen. Um, I'll bring this back now to the commission. I'll make a motion. Is there anyone virtually who wants to speak on this item? Right. Hearing none. I'd make Commissioners. A approve subject to staff comments. We have second. Second. Please. Commissioner Aldrich. Any further discussion? Then all in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Any, opposed? Any opposed, nay? Hearing none, motion passes 10-0. Is there any other uh, business to come before the commission today? Then enjoy the rest of your afternoon, folks. Thank you. Thank you. The meeting is adjourned.